Welcome back to The Daily Grind, everyone. So I have three beds that I'm gonna be working on in the next couple uh, weeks. So I've turned over some beds. I've got this one here. This is a six by three. I've got that one there, which is also a six by three. And then right there is a four by eight. I've got some cool new tools that I'm gonna use to plant. So first is this. This has these little spikes that you can remove and place in different spots. There's more of them than here. Uh, but they can be, uh, you can make holes with this every either one inch, one and a half inch, two inch, and as it goes up, I think up to every six inch. Now this is 12 inches long, so a six inch would be two of them. You know, uh, I mean, I guess technically you'd use it for every 12 inch too, but I would find that it's just easier to use a dibbler, a uh, single dibbler for that. But yeah, this makes it easy. You can make uh, rows, which I'm gonna be using to plant each one of these beds because I'm gonna be planting a lot of peas. And I'm gonna show you guys the layout pretty soon. And every week or so, I'm gonna come out with a video uh, showing what I'm planting in each one of these beds. So one week, one bed, next week, the next bed, that type of thing. So keep, uh, keep watching. Today is gonna to be the first one, but this is a pretty cool tool. Uh, next, I got something else because I'm gonna plant peas, but I'm also in the same bed gonna be planting uh, turnips uh, in one bed, uh, carrots in another, and then the bigger one, I'm gonna be planting some cabbage and lettuce and stuff like that. So that's what this is for. So this is the square uh, gardener seeding thing, whatever. I got it on Amazon, it's like 20 bucks. A little pricey, I think, for what it is. It's just a piece of plastic, but it allows you to get perfect spacing. And with square uh, gardening, uh, square foot gardening, it's you get a lot more plants in one area than row. So we're going to give this a try. I'm going to see how this works. Uh, but what's nice is it has this little pen thing up there that you can use to not only put the seeds in, but also make the holes. So it's got little numbers on there. You can see how how deep you're planting. And then also has a little funnel on the back that you can put in each one of the holes to help you guide those seeds in. So we'll see. I'm gonna give this a try. I'm not sure how this is gonna work, but I'm kind of excited to use it. So so I'm gonna show you guys kind of what the plan is here. And then we're gonna get to planting the first bed. In the back, because the sun comes in from this direction, right? So it, the sun's over here. Uh, it, if you look, it comes up overhead like this. So. I'm going to plant on the back end the peas because they get tall. And then, so it'll just be a row of peas along the back end that I'll trellis up. And then in the front here, I can do the square foot gardening. So I'll get two feet of square. I can place the square in. There we go. I plant my, my seeds, right? And then I place the square in here. I plant my seeds and I got that back row for the peas to come up. All right, so first let's start with the peas. So I'm going to use this tool. You can see how this works. Let's get to it. All right, so the variety I'm planting today is called Lincoln pea, and this is a good shelling pea. I've got a couple different varieties of peas I'm gonna be planting this fall. Let's get to this. All right, come here, let's kneel down for a minute. You can talk to the camera. All right, so we've got the square here. We're gonna start planting. I've got a whole bunch of different turnips and I got rutabaga and some radish and that's what we're planting. Are you ready to help? 
All right, so let's see. We're gonna take this, I'm gonna pull this off. Yeah, we'll keep that there. And we'll just push this in. You wanna help pushing it in? We're gonna try to, there you go. So that hit the ground, that's good, or the soil depth. Now it's got this thing. So the first one that we're gonna plant is daikon. Come on, Abby. So we got one inch. Now I'm gonna go a little bit more because there's some depth to this seeding tray. So a little bit more than one inch. And I think the daikons, we're doing four, so it's the blue. That makes the holes for us. Now, here we go. Let me see. Do you want to? You want to put that in there? Good job. That was pretty easy, huh? Yeah. Do you want to move it to the next blue one? Make sure it's on there. Move it to the next blue one. Good. Move to the next one. You're my good helper. Thank you. All right. So, here we go. Wait, hold on. You know, and I forgot, to save space, I was gonna put a whole bunch of cherry bell radish around it uh, because they, those grow so fast and I'll be able to harvest those before those daikons get any kind of size. And actually for each one of these, I'm gonna be planting a larger radish or turnip and then the, the little cherry bells around it um, or French breakfast, so one or the other. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna do that. Are we covering it again? All right, so French breakfast. You want to plant these? Sure. All right. You want to You want to help me by moving that or do you want me to move it and you put two in? Um two in. All right, two in there. My the finger. Just with fingers, it's fine. There's too many to do it that way. <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna move it. We're going to this one. I'm gonna do two. All right, two. You don't need that thing. Okay. You only have one? I'll do. All right, so the next is gonna be the Starburst uh, turnip. It's, all of them are gonna be planted the same, four with then ra uh, the small radishes around it.
All right, next is gonna be rutabaga. All right, so that's halfway done. Now, this is the first time I've used this tool. I'm gonna to be honest, this does take longer than just making a row and sprinkling the seeds. However, if this ends up keeping good spacing and makes uh, thinning less difficult later, uh, it might be worth it. But as of now, it is more difficult. It takes longer. I mean, I'm only halfway done. I would be completely done easily by now. Now my camera is about ready to die, so I need to go and get a different battery. So that means I'm gonna come back in a minute, but I just didn't want to talk about that. Also, I started off, we're doing all the reds with the smaller radish, like the cherry bell or the bre French breakfast around it. I mean, I'm still keeping the blue, right? So all the blue holes, which is just four per square, uh, that's, that's for all the bigger stuff like rutabaga, daikon radish, all, all the bigger radishes, but the small radishes that are going around it, um, I started off with only the red. And I switched uh, once I got here to doing the yellow, but this yellow is so close that I did that red, this yellow, that red. So all the corners I got the red and the rest I got yellow, right? So yellow like this and then the reds around and that's why i did with that just to keep a good spacing all right so i just finished up the planting we can remove this now if you notice there's a double line right there and that's because this square didn't quite fit so this one came to right here and then i have this bar so i couldn't get it down so i had to move over that which made it exactly that space so I, I just didn't plant that side row here because that was really close to the French breakfast radishes in there. I like to show you guys the date. It is September 16th, okay? So we can tell how long this takes for it to sprout. Next thing I'm gonna do is put in stakes for these peas to go up. So let me grab those. All right, so I'm gonna start with stakes on either side of this and these are heavier duty stakes than the peas need but you'll see why in a minute all right now for the bamboo stakes and these are just going to hold the peas up they don't need a lot of support but they do need to climb so There we go. All right, so that's gonna allow the peas to grow up that. And again, they're on the back side of this, so they're not gonna block the sun uh, of my radishes. But right now, because of the heat, I do need to block the sun in order to get all these to sprout. It's 95 degrees out, the soil temperature is gonna be roughly about that. So I need to get a shade cloth up, and I've got a 40% shade cloth that should be able to be supported by this pretty easily. All right, now I just got these little U-stakes. I'm gonna stake them down on either side, but I've got, it is a little bit too long. It's gonna come out into my yard a little bit, so I'm gonna fold it back under itself and put some rocks on top. All right, there we go, three rocks. I got some stakes in the sides and it's kind of pretty good lean-to. I need to probably 
tie this down like that so that way that's not swinging around but there we go so that'll block all the sun coming in from the morning and then in the afternoon we'll get a little corner of the sun here that's okay i think it'll totally be fine and so this will stay nice and cool a lot cooler than without this which will allow these to sprout. Now, once they get to you know seedling height, we're gonna have temperatures drop anyway. So this isn't gonna be dropping any sunlight for them really, maybe a little bit. Um, but even if I left this up, it's only a 40% shade cloth. And so I would say I could probably leave it up until you know mid, -no mid October or so, uh, end of October uh, without any consequences because we do have very strong sun in the summer and fall but we're coming into winter. So pretty soon this will be taken off, temperatures will drop, uh, but this is a good start. So now I just need to water this. All right, I almost forgot to mention, I removed my drip irrigation system, which actually I need to put back in right now. Totally forgot about that. But first let's water. I wanna water with overhead, um, just to make sure everything gets soaked. And really I'm gonna be watering daily overhead until these sprout, just to make sure that every inch is watered that drip irrigation is it's really only like once every six to eight inches or so we've got a drip line actually it might be 12. and so until these gather roots and start pulling moisture from different parts of you know this bed i think it's best to overhead water and that'll keep everything nice and moist until they sprout Now, I just need to remove the cap because it's been sitting off for a couple days. Make sure nothing got in here so that doesn't get stuck in the lines and clog everything up. You can see all that. That's, um, we have really hard water. So, uh, you know, every once in a while I gotta run vinegar through this. But, let's go ahead and turn this on. You can see water coming out right there. So that's good. Let's turn it back off. And we are going to cap that once more. So now let's see how this drips. We got, we got drips everywhere. So that's good. It is September 16th. So we can keep track of how long this takes. All right, so today is September 24th. I don't know if you guys can see that. Maybe, it's a little dark. Anyway, September 24th is the date. And let me get this trash out of the way. I gotta pick that up. Um, these came up quite a few days ago, at least the uh, turnips and radishes did. Uh, but we're just starting to get some sprouts from the beans or i'm sorry the the peas so those are the lincoln peas right along there <sighs> these unfortunately i had an issue so if you guys remember i put up the shade cloth here right when these had sprouted actually these sprouted like within three days of me planting uh well we had a storm come in it, it knocked this off it just blew it off um completely uh, we had like 40 50 mile an hour winds uh, gusts of course but they it just ripped this right off and it was laying on here smushing all the the new sprouts and then um, even the wind blew over some of the new sprouts as well so then <laughs> uh i i was keeping it watered however i took my son on a father-son dove hunt and i forgot 
to let my wife know to come and water this in the morning. Uh, we did an overnight trip out to um, a place called Reaching Outdoors. I actually volunteer with them sometimes uh, for teaching fly fishing. Took my son on that hunt and uh, she never watered it. My fault though, because I, I, did, I forgot to tell her with all the craziness of trying to get ready for the, for the hunt. We do have some that still popped up, so I'll keep this going. But unfortunately, a lot of them in that grid did not make it. So that's really unfortunate here. Um, it looks really dry right now, but I did water it this morning. We're still having really hot temperatures. It was supposed to cool down, but that never happened. And now we've got 90 plus degrees right now. So we'll see. Hopefully it cools down before they start forming their roots. Um, because I don't really want to eat uh, bitter or overly spicy roots. Because that's, that's what can happen with turnips and radishes. Now, some of these are only 30-day radishes. I believe it's all these ones here. Really the ones that are here. So um, those are the French breakfast and the cherry bell. This one is next. This is going to be the carrots. Thanks for watching everyone. If you guys like this kind of content, please subscribe and hit that bell notification for future video updates like the one coming up for the carrots. I will see you on the next video. Now you try to escape the daily grind. Three weeks later. All the peas have popped up. We do have a couple spaces because I only put one per hole, but that's okay. We'll still get a good amount of peas, but those are coming up right now. They're doing really well. With doing this seeding square, if you're going to do multiple different varieties, don't do two varieties that look identical <laughs> when they come up. I have no clue what is a cherry bell or breakfast radish here and what is the other type of radish. That's ready. Let's see how it looks. Pick that one. Leave the other. There we go. That's a nice little uh, French breakfast radish. So these are ready. It's been right around the 30 day mark and that's how long they take. A little less actually is what they take. I'm going to leave these for a couple more days till they get a little more plump. You can see that's a white stem. So that's not one. That's that's the daikon, I think, is what I planted there. 